I want to show you a simple example for dynamic programming, and that is rod cutting. So the problem is we assume you have a steel rod um, of a certain length, integer length, length n, um, and you want to cut it into pieces as to maximize your profit. Okay, and for that you have to know for a certain length how much profit you get uh, for that length. So that is your input. I have here information for a certain length. So if I cut a piece of length one, that piece has worth in the, my example one, the piece of length two has worth five, and then the numbers that you see here. So for instance, if n is four, uh, just think about this for a moment. What is an optimal cutting? Yeah, I have length four, how should I cut? Hopefully you figured out. And what you want to do is two pieces of length two, you get a profit from, of 10. If you would do instead to simply take the piece as such, you would get a profit of nine, so that wouldn't be that good. Um, three and one also gives you only nine. So two times two is what it is. Now the problem we want to consider is how do we find an optimal cutting? Well, that may be first the question of how many possible cuttings are there, because if there wouldn't be that many, we could try all. But that is not a good option, because that is essentially an exponential number. Yeah, so we cannot simply try all cuttings. What we will need to do instead is something clever. And what this will be based on is that for this problem, we can reduce the big problem an optimal solution of the big problem to optimal solutions of smaller problems. Because if I know how, let's assume I know it's a good idea to make the first piece length i. And I have n minus i left. For n minus i, I don't have to look starting from n, but this is a sub-problem where an optimal solution for n minus i, if the best way to cut was first to cut i, combined, then the combination of that gives me a solution for n, yeah? or stated in terms of a recurrence. So we have the following recurrence. The maximum profit for length n, I can calculate as, so let's assume it's optimal to first cut a piece of length i, and I get the profit for, for that piece plus whatever the optimal solution for the length of the rest is, and that is length n minus i. Now I do not know that, that i is optimal, so I need to take the maximum of all possible ways of doing the first cut. But this gives me a recursive formulation, which I can transform into an algorithm, namely a dynamic programming algorithm. So how can we compute this efficiently? So first of all, let me show you a solution that is maybe intuitive, but not efficient. So what's wrong with the following algorithm? So what is the running time of this algorithm? It seems that it does exactly what it, we want it to do. I mean, it actually does uses exactly this recurrence here. Yeah. But what's wrong with this algorithm? So the problem is that if I look at the recursive calls here, starting from n, I will do recursive calls. I will test cutting off a piece of length one, of length two, of length three, and so on. So I mean, for n, I will test I don't know, n minus one, n minus two, n minus three. So I will have recursive calls for all of these sizes and so on. But then for n minus 1, I again have a recursive call where, I mean, uh, let's, I would test how about cutting off something of length 1, and then the remainder has length n minus 2, or if I cut off something of length 2, n minus 3, and so on. So what we have here is so-called overlapping sub-problems. I mean, the n minus 2 is here, it's also here. n minus 3, I also have twice. And for the n minus 2 here and here, if I then recursively continue, I get more of the n minus threes, and I shouldn't do those calculations over and over again. Because if I do those over and over again, I get um, essentially this recurrence here. 
and that um, okay you can try to solve it by yourself that um, solves two two to the n but it can prove this for instance simply directly with an induction so and this algorithm is as slow as it is because we do not make use of this overlapping subproblem the subproblem we recalculate the solution over and over again what we should have done is we should have either done the calculation bottom up first solve the small problems keep that solution and then when i do the larger problems look up what i solved or so-called memoization meaning i do because of course but as soon as i solved something once i store the, the solution so if i call it again then i do not recalculate but i look up the solution that's already there so then the algorithm looks like this um, we have an array here where we store the solutions for all sub problems starting with length zero and ending on length n with length n we then have solved the problem we wanted to solve if my rod has length zero there's no profit i could get otherwise what i do i simply use my recursive formula but now okay this sh should ideally be these brackets because what i do when um, uh, doing the formula i do not do a recursive course but i can simply for the smaller, smaller sub problems because at this point i already have calculated them i can look up the value yeah so for instance here we start with okay i is one uh, j is one i is one q is a maximum of q and pi plus r and this is now one minus one so zero so r zero is zero so i get simply get pi i write this as a q i initialize to minus infinity so now i set this to pi at this point and write this into the entry so right now my array r looks like i have the zero first because i wrote it here and then now i have my p1 simply here but then for the next uh, uh, so that is for for um, length one for length two it now gets more interesting because what i'm testing here is either i simply take p2 plus zero or i take p1 plus and then i look up uh, what i have here for p1 which is p1 so i get two times p1 and it continues like that what is the running time of this algorithm? I have nested loops here. So this one, I loop, I goes from one to J. I always do constant work. So this is then, if I run from one to J overall, this gives me O of J. I do this going J from one to N. So I essentially get this sum. I goes, from J goes from one to N, O of J. So this is an arithmetic sum. And that solves to quadratic and that's much faster than exponential and that's dynamic programming by a simple example where you be make use of the fact that we have overlapping optimal substructures where we can recalculate the solutions